What's up YouTube? I just wanted to share with you guys a solar IoT setup that we build and we use at my work. Our core business doesn't evolve around this, but we do use this quite a bit and we're kind of ramping up uh, to use these more frequently. Uh, it's just a fiberglass box. It's got some glands for the solar cables to go through. It gets paired with we use these rich solar 200 watt panels monocrystalline so it's actually a pretty small panel for 200 watt rating rich solar they are actually pretty great we got some two waterproof glands for rj45 ethernet connection we use the connect, uh, cameras to these. And then on the inside, we got EPEVER. I think this is a 30 amp charge controller. We've got the uh, uh, cam switch. This is a DC uh, 12 or 24 volt DC power over Ethernet switch. We got two ports that are going out to our, our uh, RJ45 glands, and then uh, we've got a little little dongle here to connect our IoT device inside here. Our lithium iron phosphate batteries, and I'm going to get to that in just a minute and talk about those because that's really one of the things I want to talk about. But uh, yeah, so we can we have all kinds of uh, different business applications that use IoT devices and one of them would would be uh, like a Raspberry Pi uh, we use the uh, Jetson Nanos for when we need to have the power for uh, artificial intelligence AI uh, we have our own neural networks that we use that we've developed and uh, so we can use this for a number of those IoT applications that we need to put out into the field so you know, let's just plug this guy in. You can see him go. There you go. That's powering a Raspberry Pi off the PoE switch and a battery bank. We're not hooked up to the solar yet. But, so, what are these batteries? Well, this is what I want to get at. Yep, get ready. Dun dun dun, matey. And I know there's been a lot of trash talk about these batteries, and probably rightfully so. But here's the thing: these are fine for IoT usage. Uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, maybe a maximum of 25 watts that we use uh, worth of equipment in these boxes. And so that kind of low power draw, and we and I wire them in a 24 volt, um, so a two series and a three parallel. So there's there's a lot of uh, there's plenty of power if, if we need it, but we're not putting much of a load on these batteries at all. And here's the other thing: we've already got these out in the field. We've got these units that have been running well over a year. And we've had zero problems with this. Now, sometimes we do get a couple of these battery packs in that are just dead on arrival. And, uh, you know, we just send them back to Amazon and get them replaced. But the ones out in the field have been working perfectly fine. And I know a lot of people will say, well, these don't have the, um, the low, you know, the, the freezing temperature disconnect. Well, I don't need it because I can program the charge controller it, it has a little temperature sensor to stop charging these batteries if it is too cold so that's protected as long as you get you know as long as you go into the software and change the uh, the profile with the uh, the RS-485 cable to the charge controller you set everything up to to do that if you there's a setting in there called lithium protection or something like that that does that and it will disconnect uh, charging 
and discharging this battery when it's too cold. So that, that part of it's that part of it's just fine. Another thing I like about this is that say one of these batteries does die. Well, it's not really that big of a deal because we've got these other two banks that are in parallel that are still uh, you know going to provide power and be able to be charged and still keep our our setup going so it's it's actually redundancy so we're talking about a really cheap battery you know probably one of the cheapest lithium iron phosphate batteries that you can find on Amazon and we're using it in a professional environment and we've been using it for over a year these we've had these systems out in the field for over a year so as long as you're not trying to run an inverter or trying to run your RV or camper or your off-grid home off these uh, and you're doing something like a, you know an IOT setup where you're not going to be stressing these batteries out these work fine and for the price it's stupid you know to pay um, you know overpay for something that you don't need to perform that well. Um, so, I guess as as time progresses, I'll, I'll let you guys know if we ha start having any failures with these. But we haven't, <laughs> um, and uh, you know they work fine. So they do have their place in the world, and really, their place is right there in in a small current draw setup where. We want lithium iron phosphate. We want the safety of the lithium iron phosphate. We want the longevity. And as long as you have your charge controller set up properly, we're not drawing any power directly off these batteries. We draw it off the load port, the charge controller. So the charge controller can control all that stuff for us, the low volt, the, the you know, the low uh, temperature disconnect and all that. Uh, but there you have it. I just wanted to give you a, a a rundown of a system of an IoT solar powered system that we we actually do use in a professional environment and it works perfectly fine so there you have it see you guys next video